Hey guys, in my previous video, I give an introduction about my upcoming series where I mention what I want to do in this series, uh, why I want to do it and how I want to do it. Uh, now we would like to do something concrete and the scope for this tutorial uh, is twofold. One is we would like to create a blank project and two, we would like to learn something about readme files, which is a very standard way of how you, how you share your work with other people. The approach for this tutorial is going to be based on our first principle, which we discussed in our previous, previous introductory video, and that is to do a need based learning. And what that means is we will create only basic minimum stuff and we will, you know, only introduce new concepts or we, we create new stuff when there's a need for it. Uh, so without taking any more time, let's take a look, let's tackle our first goal, which is to create a blank project. So let's first go to the repository where you want to create your project. I'm keeping my projects in D drive. And then you want to give a name to, to your project, name to your repository. Uh, now there's a convention uh, that normally people follow, and that is to give a one word name for their frameworks. Why? Because then it's easier to, you know, just talk about it on your standups. And, and when you take that name, people understand what that means. Uh, there are some other conventions which you which are good to follow for consistency. For example, I like to name all my repositories as a Pascal case. That is how a Pascal case looks like. So there are no no spaces while you are creating a repository, and the files are named as camel case, and that's how a camel case file looks like. Uh, so in our case, we are going to name our uh, name our project something, and the name that I've chosen is Bob. Why? Well, Bob comes from Uncle Bob, uh, which is the name of Robert C. Martin. And he created a book called Clean Code, uh, and that book helped me a lot, you know, in terms of improving how I write my test automation frameworks. And it's more like a tribute from me to him. So let's call our framework as Bob. Uh, make directory Bob with Pascal case. Now let's change to our repository. And now we want to start doing something with it. So you see, we already have met our first goal, which was to create a blank project. And now we want to start working on our second goal, which is to work on readme files. Now terminal is not a very intuitive way of working with, with files. So let's switch to something which is a little bit more intuitive and which is also my favorite. And that is VS code. If you don't already have VS Code installed, I would highly advise you to, to install VS Code on your machine. Um, if you click on this, you can see all the files that you have. At this moment, we have no files. So let's just start by creating our first file, which is a readme.md file. Uh, you see, I said we will be using camel case for creating files, but I actually use all upper cases. Well, in case of readme, that's the convention that is being used. And we would always like to follow conventions. So let's say readme.md. And maybe we can already start by, uh, you know, putting some things that we already learned and discussed so far. Uh, in fact, we can start with from with conventions because we said uh, we want to follow some conventions for folders. We want to use Pascal case so that you remember in future. Uh, for files, we want to use camel case for example .txt um, and names are basically abstract you know abstract one word names in our case our project name is Bob and there's another thing that I that I can that I forgot to mention is for example if you click on this this icon it can show you how your code will look once you push it on let's say on a client called github now it doesn't look very nice so let's make it a little bit nicer let's convert this into a heading we don't want to change it into you know this kind of uh, tip so let's push our code a little bit back and you see you're already learning some things about how to work with readme files now let's mention something else let's talk about tools you already saw saw me using powershell and i will be using powershell very frequently uh, another code another tool is vs code which is what we're using now 
um, and then we will also be covering some important files you know uh, we already started with one which is our readme.md files and you will come across many more important files that we will use for you know solving certain problems but we'll talk about them when we when we reach there um i think now before anything else it would be it would be important to show share some of our intentions of you know what we want to achieve with this whole framework so maybe it will be nice to mention some test goals uh, some of the goals that i find always important are uh, our code should be readable it should be uh, maintainable uh, and it should be scalable it should be uh, trustworthy and it should be flexible and let's spend some some time here to you know talk about why do we think a code should why it is important to have this code so for example um, a readable code is very easy to understand and so if something is easier to understand it is also easier to maintain it so that's why you want to have you know uh, a readable code easy to understand uh, easy to understand uh, easy to maintain right maintainability why is maintainability important you will see as and when your project will grow uh, you will find yourself changing you know changing existing code and if a code is not not too maintainable you will have a night night in your hands so project will grow project will grow and a good design good design will lead to uh, maintainable framework right uh, quicker fixes quicker fixes quicker addition of new test cases for example uh, scalability is important why is scalability important well in my past projects when i did not know for example how to make good code i was running my tests in serial and what that means is if one of my tests let's say take two minutes to finish uh, 10 of my tests will take 20 minutes and before i know there will be a lot of test cases and you know your test cases will take forever to finish and what that means is you don't have a very scalable framework because if you're if you're if your project team makes a small change and if it takes forever for you to run those tests well you can't really uh, you know get a quick feedback from those tests what we ideally want is even when you have hundreds of test cases they should finish in a very small amount of time maybe in a matter of minutes and even if you add 100 more it should not add uh, time linearly but maybe by a few seconds or maybe by a minute so uh, scalability becomes an important part when you also want to run your framework in a ci sort of setup right uh, trustworthy i mean when you when you when you're building your test your test should be reliable and they should not be flaky because if you have flaky tests and if your team finds them to be flaky you know they will, they will stop bothering about them and then it may happen that uh, there might be bugs but no, people will not pay attention to them because they think hey it might just be a flaky test so you always want your test to be trustworthy flexible well you want your test to be flexible because it's, it's not only one environment where, you, where you'll be running your tests on you'll be running a test in multiple environments like you know local host uh, you'll be running them on ci uh, you might be running them on multiple browsers and then you don't want to be always keep touching your code when you want to run your test on these multiple settings so these are some of the important test goals of course there will be many more that we might come across but hey then we use a second principle and that is first make it work then make it better so let's start with basic minimum and when the need arises, we will add more uh, but now the goals are not very quantifiable right these are very qualitative goals let's add some test objectives that we can actually measure right um, now some of the test objectives that I find important are your tests, uh, tests should be atomic, tests should be atomic, what that means is uh, they are not dependent on, you know, independent tests basically, independent tests. Why atomic tests are important? Well, they allow you 
to, to run tests in parallel which is an important important thing if you want to achieve you know scalability um, another important objective is to to have a clear uh, clear separation of concerns clear separation of concerns and what that means is you want to separate your code config and data and not mix them up and this is very important for maintainability point of view what else uh, let's see the next thing is you don't want to mix your um, tests should not mix intentions with implementation and what that means is your implementation of application of application logic should go in a separate class in a separate class if you're talking about front end it could be you know page objects and the intentions should stay in test right well, once we start working on test i will show you what this means how it works uh, we want to have version control in our framework we we'll use kit which is pretty standard uh, other thing is we want to have uh, we want to have our framework backed up which is on on a client server let's say github um, um, then we want to have let's say some good reports which are let's say ci readable and human readable html reports what else well we want to have good logging in our framework which can you know give us logging on various levels logging on various levels for example debug info error right uh what else then we want to have for example uh notifications so when your test run in ci and your test run in ci you would want to know what happened let's say on on slack or my emails right and that brings me to my last objective for now and that is basically to run your tests in ci automatically so that you don't have to run them and maybe the things that you can cover here is uh, triggering your test with each uh, request don't worry about it what it means we will cover it later uh, triggering your test on schedule uh, and let's say manually triggering the pills if the need may be um, so I think with this we have covered a good amount of ground in terms of you know uh, what we want to do and how exactly we want to do it and now I think we also have something which is worth uh, saving protecting backing up so maybe in our next video we will try to cover these two topics which is about version controlling and, and backing up yeah, backing our project on github where we can share our uh, project to other people and you know maybe later we can also teach about how we can collaborate uh, collaborate with other team members right so i think for now this is enough and i'll see you guys in my next video we will cover version controlling and backing up our project on github and maybe in the next video we can see next next video we can see how to collaborate with other team members 
Uh, so I hope you learned something something in this video, and uh, I look forward to see you guys in my in my next video. So have a good day. Until next time, see you. Bye bye.